grab your copy of God's Word we will go to the book of Joshua to the book of Joshua chapter number 6 verses 22 through 25 the book of Joshua chapter number 6 verses 22 through 25 and I know you're have it by your standing again the Old Testament book the book of Joshua chapter number 6 Verses 22 through 25. Praise the Lord for our music ministry that blessed us on blessed us mightily on this morning. And our guest psalmist, oh my God, thank you. We bless you so much. Thank you for blessing us on today. Again, the book of Joshua, chapter number 6, verses 22 through 25. If you have it, say amen. amen. Just to look and say, wait a moment. Amen. It is good to see family and friends today. My mother is in the back. Always good to see my mama. My brother is in the back. It's always good to see my brother Julian. It's always good to see my big sis Darnika. Good to see my sister and all of my family and friends. But I will dare not say another word until I talk about my best friend, who is my family and friend, all wrapped up into one, my wife. Lady Noon, God bless you. Yeah, I'm the real smart man. <laughs> Joshua chapter number 6, verses 22 through 25. I will be reading from the New American Standard Version of the text. It may differ slightly from yours, but follow along as closely as you can. The Bible says this. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, Go into the harlot's house and bring the woman and all she has out of there as you have sworn to her. So the young men who were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brothers and all she had. They also brought out all of her relatives and placed them outside the camp of Israel. They burned the city with fire and all that was in it. Only the silver and gold and articles of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. However, Rahab, the harlot, and her father's household and all she had Joshua spared and she has lived in the midst of Israel to this day for she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho can you say amen? amen and right before you take your seat I would like to use you in the sermon if you would look at your neighbor and say neighbor, neighbor. today's sermon subject, today's sermon subject. God, can even love God can even love somebody like me somebody like God can even love somebody like me. I have made the attempt to study the word of God to the point that I will be able to stand before anyone and declare what thus saith the Lord. I've gone through classes and schooling, read various books, read the scriptures, trying my best to understand the Word of God to be able to explain it and articulate the truths that are found in the Word of God to you. Whether it be apologetics or systematic theology or whatever the uh, course or the subject may be, I have tried my best to read and understand the scriptures so that you will be able to digest it and apply it to your everyday life. But I'm I almost am ashamed to say this, but there are some things in the scripture that I just can't explain. I've tried my best to understand that whether it's in the Greek or the Hebrew, the, the, the context or the structure of the word. And I've tried my best to understand what the text is saying, but there come, so there come some things that I just can't explain to you. I don't understand why God loves somebody like you and I. The truth were to be told, our past should disqualify us from even walking into the household of God. 
And I like to say these things early on in the message because I don't want you to walk in so high minded that you think you're all that. Because as beautiful and as wonderful as you are, we all come with some baggage. But the truth were to be told, you, one of the biggest prayers that you pray is, Lord, don't let that skeleton come out the closet. Because for all of us, we are, are trying to wrestle with the fact with God, how and why do you love somebody like me? Now, it, on, the, on the surface, you would say that it's easy for God to love someone like you when you walk in and you look the way you look today. And I will tell you that you look snapshot ready. But I will tell you that Christ didn't die for the you that's dressed up today. But I've come to tell you that the Lord died on the hill of Calvary for the one that has sin issues from time to time to time to time. I like to say that God died for the Old Testament or the before Christ you. Now you are reformed or being reformed. But when God met you and when he pulled you out of the pit of destruction, you didn't look like what you look right now. Do I have about 50 real people in the building today? They say, Pastor Herb, I hadn't always been the way that I am today. But if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. I don't know where I would be. And I would tell you something, friends, before we get deeper to the message. I would tell you that your enemies are having a hard time wondering how God can love somebody like you. Your enemies are trying to figure out. Now, I know that God can love anybody, but I know he can't love her. I know that God can love anybody. I know he can't love him until you look in the mirror and ask yourself the question, why does God even love me? With my crazy self, with your inconsistent ways, with your fleshly desires, you probably had some crazy thoughts on your way to church. Let me change that. You probably had some crazy thoughts while you were sitting in church. It's family and friends day but you may be sitting with your friend and one of your enemies may be sitting on the other side and you've had some crazy delusional thoughts but yet and still God said I love you anyway. Do I have anybody in the building that can testify that God loves me anyway? Do I have anybody you grew up on the wrong side of the tracks but God said I love you anyway? Do I have any real people in the building that your past is a little shady, your present is a little rocky but God God said, if you're on my side, your future will be better than your past because I am the Lord your God. I can't explain to you grace. I can, I can tell you that it is unmerited favor and I can tell you it is you getting things that you do not deserve. But it's hard to explain grace for you and I. A loving God as he is can love somebody like us. A loving God that says, even though you're sick, I can still heal you, even though you haven't talked to me in a while. A loving God that will allow you to walk into this place with your head hung up, even though you really want to hang your head down. It is only the grace of God that you're still here. If you look back over your life, you can easily testify that it was the grace of God that kept me. If I don't say nothing else, I think I've said a mouthful. It was the grace of God that covered me. It was the grace of God that washed me. It was the grace of God that summoned me. It was the grace of God that made me who I am. I'm like, Paul, I am what I am by the grace of God. And if I have anybody in the building that can say, I am what I am because of his grace. You don't have to look like what your neighbor wants you to look like, but I look like who God wants me to look like. And I look like who he, I, who he wants me to look like because I've been saturated in his grace. We we, this text that we have read, we see the end portion of Joshua chapter 6. We see the fact that this, we're introduced to this woman by the name of Rahab, um, but you can't understand Joshua 6 until you first wrestle with Joshua chapter 2. We understand that in the text that Moses has now moved on to glory and Joshua is now the undisputed leader of the children of Israel. And God has spoken to Moses and said, the same way that I have been with my servant Moses, I will also be with you. Be strong and very courageous. 
courageous. Do not fear what you will see because I am with you. So yeah. Joshua, the military strategist as he is, he sends spies into the land. He says, I want you to investigate the land, especially Jericho. So he sends these two spies out into the land. And as they move into the fortified city called Jericho, they move and they go into a house and there was a woman that was there. Yeah. This wasn't just any uh, this wasn't just any um, woman. Uh, this she, she was the exact opposite of the church mother. Uh, this particular woman, the Bible calls her a harlot. Uh, some of you would understand as a prostitute or a thought in 2018. This particular woman by the name of Rahab, she lived on top of the wall. She lived on top of the city wall and what would happen is that she would wait for some male to come to her so that she can give her body for some funds. And But the interesting thing is, is that God knew exactly where to send the spies into. So they go into this woman's house by the name of Rahab. And as they are speaking to Rahab, Rahab hides the two men on the roof. She hides the two men on the roof and the word or gossip gets back to the king. You know, gossip tings, tends to move kind of quickly. And the, and the gossip moves to the king and said there have been two men that have gone into Rahab's house. We need to go down and see what's going on there. They send the brigade down to Rahab's home and say, I heard you got two brothers in there. She said, yes, I've had two men here, but they have already left. If you move fast, you might be able to find them. But she had already hidden them on top of the roof. And the Bible declares that she goes on top of the roof and she makes this, this, this startling statement. I know the Lord your God. Okay, you missed the whole shout point right there. Now, let me give you a little bit, let me give you a little bit of background. Now, understand that Rahab is not just a prostitute, but understand that Rahab is a Gentile prostitute. In other words, she is surrounded by people that don't even believe in God. But yet and still, she said, I know the Lord your God. Okay, y'all missed it. Let me go on this side. She is a Canaanite woman that, that the people around her don't even believe in Yahweh. And the first thing that comes out of her mouth is, I know the Lord your God. So it lets me understand that just because you, just because you don't look like what people think you ought to look like, that does not mean that you don't know who the Lord is. And you know the problem with church people is, the problem with church people is, is that we judge you based on your appearance. But just because your skirt may be up here, don't mean that you know the Lord. Oh, well, okay. Do I have anybody in the building that everybody may look at you one way, but I still know who the Lord is. I like the old song. I know that my Redeemer lives. And you may be looking at me right now and I may not smell how you think I ought to smell. And I may not look how you think I ought to look, but I know the Lord your God. Look at somebody and say, I know who the Lord is. I know the Lord your God. We've heard, we've heard some things, spies. I've heard how y'all crossed the Red Sea. I've heard how the Lord had blessed you. And he's blessed you to the point when we heard that y'all was coming, our hearts melted. It's right there in your Bible. I'm in Joshua chapter 2. Our hearts melted. But I need you to do me a favor. I need you to remember me. I need you when y'all come and invade this city. I need you to remember me. Has that been anybody's prayer? God, while you're blessing everybody else, Lord, I need you. Do I have any real people in the building? God, I know that you're blessing and I know that you're healing, but God, I don't want you to stop blessing them, but Lord, Remember me. They said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We need you. We will, we will spare you. Because you have spared us, the spies said we will spare you. But this is what we need you to do. Because this is about, it's, it's about to go down here in a few minutes. But I need you to tie a scarlet cord down from your window. 
And as you tie the scarlet cord down the window, we will be able to know that this is Rahab's house. So if I were you, I would get everyone, all of your family members and get them in the house because the scarlet cord or the red cord, everybody that's under it shall be saved. So I need, I'm, I'm going somewhere with it. So I need everyone to come into the house and we will spare everyone. Rahab said, I will do such a thing. So now we get in the job. Joshua chapter 6. And the Bible says that in Joshua chapter 6 that they began a campaign to bring the wall down. Okay, Aaron, the Bible says that Joshua commanded the people, I want you to march around Jericho. I want you to march around it for seven days. I want you to just march around it. I don't want you to say a word. I don't want you to say anything. All I want you to do is march. You know the problem with some of us is that we don't shut our mouths. You talking when you should be much. See, some of y'all didn't like that. I could tell some of y'all didn't like that. You came to have a good time, but let me tell you something. Until you learn how to shut your mouth. For many of us, the reason why you not further ahead is because of the thing underneath your nose. Okay, let me get back. Y'all don't want to hear that. So, so they marched around the city. And the Bible says they marched around the city. They ain't even say a word. But on the seventh day, I want you to march around the same city seven times. Now, wait a minute, God. We've marched around this city this entire time and nothing has happened yet. But until you are willing to look crazy, you can't get the things that you need by faith. Well, they are marching around this city. And as they are marching around the city on the last day, he said, now I'm going to blow the ram's horn, the shofar or the trumpet. I'm going to blow this trumpet. And when I blow the trumpet, I want you to shout and the wall will come down. OK, y'all missed a good point right there. When I tell you to shout the wall that looks like it's never coming down, the wall that looks like it's insurmountable, the wall that looks like it'll never be moved, the wall that says it'll never fall down. The child that looks like he never going to get right. The girl that say I'm always going to be a lesbian. The Bible the Bible says when he says shout, the wall will come down. Look at somebody say my wall will come down. Okay, you, you look at the wrong neighbor. I need you to look at somebody and say my wall will come believe that in the spirit. If you believe your wall is coming down, I want you to shout like your wall is dropping. I believe somebody's wall is falling right now. I believe that somebody's wall is falling in the spirit. I need somebody to shout like your wall is coming. High five your neighbor and say my wall is coming down. Oh, you didn't high five the right neighbor. High five your other neighbor and say, my wall is coming. Depression, you got to come. Suicidal thoughts, you got to come. Crazy thoughts, you got to come. My wall is coming down. My wall got to come down. I don't know what your wall is, but I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that wall got to come. And the Bible says that they started to shout. I feel like I'm in the weight room right now. The Bible says, the Bible says that they started to shout. And the wall, this insurmountable defense mechanism, the wall came crashing down. The wall that had been up has now, under the power of God, has come down. Lady Noon, the entire wall came down. All except one section. You better son. Because remember that I said that Rahab stayed on the wall. Oh, I'm having a good time. The Bible says that the wall came down except the section that the harlot was on. Okay. okay. It's right there in the Bible. The text says as they shouted, the wall came down. But when the wall came down, the section that she was on, she was still there. How 
many of you know that when everything else is going crazy around you, that God will keep you and hold you steady? Do I have anybody in the building that can testify that God has kept you when it seems like you was going all the way down? God said, I'm going to hold you steady. I'm glad to know that the economy may be going down, but that don't mean my economy going down. See, that's why you got to watch the people that you surround yourself with. Just, baby, just because you depressed, don't put that spirit on me because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. There is no weapon that's formed against me that should be able to. Oh, yeah. The wall came down, but Rahab, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> Lenny. Rahab. The harlot, the prostitute, the thot. Her house. Still on the wall. Why her? Why? Why, 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 why Rahab? Let's say Rahab, but let's put you into the text. Why you? Why has God kept you? Why has God kept you on the wall? When everybody else was going crazy, there you are. You still got your, your, your hands out and your feet propped up. Why you? The Bible says, I need y'all to go back into the house. I need y'all to go and get the harlot. The Bible says that the spies went into the house. They didn't need the scarlet cord anymore because it was the only house that remained. But if, if I can say this, Omar, I can say that everybody that was under the cord was spared. In other words, everybody that was under can be spared. Unless you are under, not the scarlet cord, but unless you are under the blood. Okay. See, the problem is, we, we, see, the problem is we shouting over stuff we need to be getting under. Oh, I need you to know that the blood still works. Because it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the... Now, I don't know about y'all. I know y'all some, some, sophisticated. Y'all have been on the highest mountain. But, Tay, for a sinner like me, I was in the lowest valley, but the blood still reaches. Now... I'm, I'm, I'm halfway done. We're going to watch game seven of Cleveland. The Bible says this. The Bible says that they took everything that was in, the, in this city and they burned it with fire. They took the articles of gold and silver. They took the people. It was a complete annihilation. But Rahab, the prostitute, the heart at the thigh, that had not only her in the house, but her mama was there. Daddy was there. Brothers were there. So it lets me understand that if I can get right with God, you may have a loved one in the building, they not right with God. But I got some good news that if you get right with God, God said, because you are in right relationship with me, it's still going to be their decision to choose me. But I will. Do I have anybody that's making it? You made it off of Big Mama prayers. You know that your grandmama and them been praying for you. Your auntie been praying for you. As a matter of fact, your family or friend that brought you to church was praying for you. I need somebody to lift up their voice and thank God for their family and their friends that's been praying for you. Rahab. Ms. Jesse May spared from the onslaught. Spared the harlot. She now blended into with the people of Israel. She's now a part of the community. It was interesting that Ruth comes on the scene a little later. It's interesting. Ruth comes on the scene. Ruth was in the field gleaning. And the Bible says that she was gleaning and the reapers had left her blessings on purpose. 
You know, God will leave your blessings on purpose when you think you're just wandering. God has strategically put you in the right place. And the Bible says that she was gleaning on purpose. And she met somebody by the name of Boaz. Oh, Boaz is great individual. Kind of reminds me of myself. <laughs> Boaz. This guy, this guy, Boaz got it going on. Deacon Lavalis, Boaz, he's all that. He must have been raised right. He must have been raised by a good mom and a dad. His daddy was named Salmon. Great individual. Daddy raised him right. Mama had to be a, a holy person all her life. She had to be a righteous woman all her life. Until you find out that his mama name was Rahab. <laughs> okay, you missed the shout. You missed the shout. You missed the shout. She started off as a harlot. But once God got into her life, she went from a harlot to a wife to a mama. Do I have anybody that can testify when God gets in your life, a change has to happen. Do I, I need you to high five your neighbor and say a change has come over me. Hey, a change. Is anybody glad for a change? I need you to lift up your voice for a change. had a son by the name of Boaz. Boaz and Ruth had a son by the name of Obed. And Obed had a son by the name of Jesse. And Jesse had eight sons. One of those sons, you might have heard of him, his name was King David. And 14 generations after that, there was a man that was greater than Boaz. There was a man that was greater than Jesse and David. There was a man that hung on a wooden cross. There was a man that said, I'm going to die for your sins. There was a man, the greatest man of all time. His name is Jesus Christ. I'm talking about Mary's baby. I'm talking about the lily of the valley. I'm talking about the bright and the morning star. Somebody lift up your voice for Jesus. And in the line of Jesus was a prostitute, a heart of the thigh. Which lets me understand that my background and my past won't disqualify me from a future. It lets me understand that I may have a bad and a checkered past, but God can still use me. Do I have any people that's being used in the building? I don't care what you've been through. I don't care the storms you've had to fight. Look at somebody and say, God can love somebody like me. Oh, I need you to look at some, look at three people down your road and tell them God can love somebody like me. Oh, you looking at the wrong neighbor. Because if you were looking at the right neighbor, they'd be running around this church. Look at somebody else and say, God, can you somebody like me? Oh, I need you to grab one of your neighbors on your rope and tell them God can use somebody like me. Oh, see, some of y'all ain't doing it yet. I need you to find a neighbor and say, neighbor, God can love somebody like me. See, some of y'all still ain't got it yet. Find you a neighbor. You must be sitting on the wrong rope. But if you sit next to somebody, I need you to move around. Find somebody and tell them, God can use somebody like me. Oh, you must have the wrong neighbor. Switch. I need you to find a neighbor and find the right neighbor and tell them, God can use somebody like me. You must be by the wrong neighbor. We need to make another move. I need you to switch. Find you another neighbor and say, God can love somebody like me. God, he loves the unlovable. God. 
can love you in spite of your past, in spite of your background, in spite of your circumstances. I don't care what you've been hooked on. I don't care what's got you bound. Your family or your friend brought you here for a reason. But I'm going to go a step further than that. God brought you here for a specific reason. To let you know that he can still love somebody as broken as you, as confused as you, as down as you. God can still use somebody like you. Somebody bless the name of the Lord in the building today. If you are being loved by a God that can love somebody as broken as you.